Hello, welcome to another one of our uh, Twitch streams. Uh, tonight we've got John, who's a comic artist at the university. Um, if anyone, people watching, if you can let us know what the sound's like. We've had a technical issue already. Um, and then, John, if you'd like to let, let us know, let everyone know what you what you do, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm John, um, and I study comics. I'm at the end of my second year, so in September, October, I'll be going to the third and final year. Great. So uh, what we'll do is we'll head over to the other screen so you, you not see my face anymore. Um, and then we'll have a little look at what you, your Instagram, what you do on Instagram, things like that. Um, and then we'll we'll find out what you're going to draw with us tonight, as well as asking your questions and stuff. So switch switch screens. There we go. Uh, let's stick on you. Let's go with your Instagram. Let's have a little look. Um, okay, so that's now on the screen. So this is the, the picture I, I shared earlier on on our Instagram account. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, that's just uh, some fan art um, mm -hmm. on Warcraft. Okay, so you, you, you've got this on your Etsy shop. Is yeah. it prints that you sell of this or? Uh, no, that's just a one-off. That's like a sketchbook page that I cut out. All oh, right, okay. So what do you what kind of stuff do you put on your Etsy shop? Um, at the moment, it's just stuff like that. Uh, but I do plan to. I'm working on doing some prints. Mm -hmm. Okay. To get off the, that off the ground. Because I think is this a series that of Warcraft things that you've done? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there was just I, I just need well I wanted to draw some stuff and I really liked Warcraft so mm -hmm. to put them two together. Okay. I started adding some colour to that one. It's really good. So, pencil and ink, so these are traditional sketches? Yeah, yeah. So most of the stuff I do is digital. Um, okay. So I wanted to make sure I mm -hmm. don't forget how to draw normally. <laughs> yeah, just keep keep practising. Uh, like if people who watch the stream, they'll, they'll know that I uh, harp on quite regularly about keeping a sketchbook. Yeah. Just just keeping that sort of the coffee book coffee shop sketchbook I like to call it, but obviously yeah. due to lo local restrictions and everything else, sometimes you can't sit in a coffee shop for long and, and sketch anymore. Cool. So more Warcraft. Yeah, much of the same. <laughs> and this is from Saturday when we did the art yes. challenge. Yeah. Deadpool as an old man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was literally done in what fifteen minutes. Have you gone yeah. back over and coloured that? Uh, no, no. No, is that what you did? You actually, that's what you actually finished, wasn't it? Yeah. Cool. I normally yeah. draw quite quickly, anyway. Great. Yeah, it's sometimes you know getting them ideas out there quite quick. Yeah. So then we've got the uh, I don't watch Doctor Who, Doctor Who post, Mad with power. There we go. Yeah, these were all from Saturday's art challenge, weren't they? And uh, your Gyarados there. Do you, do, you, do you, I don't know, play Pokemon? Do you collect cards? Or uh, I, I did when I was younger. Like yeah. I'm, I'm an original 151. But I have no idea what the new Pokemon are. All ah, right, okay. So you don't play Pokemon Go? No. You're not walking around the street, almost getting run over, collecting your Pokemon. No. <laughs> I did try it, but I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. Didn't keep up with it. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's one of the things where you literally have to do something every day on it. Yeah. This was quite clever. It was like Disney prints were wearing nothing but a shirt or a button shirt, and we were kind of worried that it wasn't going to be suitable for the stream at the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, although I've, I've since learned that Hercules technically isn't a print, so. Did someone act, try to out you today on the stream or? No, my my wife told me afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, and you you've you've advertising your own website as well. So anyone watching who's interested in in what you do, head over to uh, how you just, it, you just it, you've spelled it differently. So is it just is it Brinkley dot com, just with yeah. the AI at the end? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, apparently that's a, an old timey spelling of my surname. So I thought, oh, oh right, okay. yeah, yeah. So it, well, it's certainly not going to be if it's if it you know if it's not widely used like you 
surname it's kind of a good word to jump on isn't it yeah uh hey hey fam me um let's put in the chat so so good how quickly you resolve these amazing cheers <laughs> there we go so do you want to tell us a little bit about this one uh, yeah, that is the last project I did at uni. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just a close-up of one of the pages. Um, we had to do a six-page comic on the theme of transition. Okay. Um, so I, my story was based on the transition between life and the afterlife. Uh, and that guy there, who funny enough is also called Steve, um, <laughs> is basically in purgatory and he's going to find out whether he's going to go to heaven or hell. Oh, right, okay. That's the basis of it. It's really cool. Is this another one of the characters from that project? Yeah. What's the deal with this one? Is he... He's, uh, yeah, he represents hell. All oh, right, okay. So then and he's not in a good mood. <laughs> nice. There you go. Is that, and I take it that's the... Heaven version? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I really like the 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 line work that you've got going on on these. They're, they're sort of um, dark shadows and that around the jawline and stuff. Mm. It's really cool. Thank you. Mm. So these all these are all from the same project, aren't they? Yeah. These transitions. So Kiss My Artichokes put Sorry I'm late, what have we got going on today? So just a quick recap, we're we're talking uh, to John, a comic artist who's currently studying at Rex and Glendale University. Um, we're just looking a little a little through just doing a bit of a deep dive into your Instagram <laughs> and asking you questions about your artwork. So I mean, some of these, the even the environments and everything else, really cool. So, is this something that you're going to be taking forward the comic book, um, selling it, or keeping the the story going? Um, I might keep that story going. Look, we've done a three or four of these like mm -hmm. micro comics, where there's maximum of six pages. Right. Um, so I have been thinking about combining them all into one book, and then seeing how that goes. Uh, Sapling Wolf in the chat, but all the shadows look cool. It's uh, a Thank really you. nice style. And does the comics have a name, or does the comic have a name? Uh, yeah, that one's called Transition, because I got really inventive. Because the theme <laughs> is also called Transition. Yeah. Is that um, Resident Evil? A little bit of. Yeah, Nemesis. Nemesis yeah, because yeah. I, I got uh, an iPad quite recently, so I want to test out Procreate. Oh, yeah, Procreate, the. Uh... The go the go to uh, app for all iPads uh, yep. owners. Have you been watching the the new Loki series? Yeah, we watched the first episode yeah. a couple of days ago. I think the new the next one's out today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of watching Loki, you're actually on here talking about Loki. Yeah. There we go. Cool. So are these all done now in Procreate? No, uh, only I've only done. Uh, the Nemesis one in Procreate, right, okay. the Loki and that, and the next one I think are done in Clip Studio. All right, okay. Uh, Kiss my but oh wow, Resi Nemesis is brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. So is this? Yes, yeah, uh, the, the front man, Billy yeah, yeah. Cool. Skulls, always like a always like some uh, skulls. Yeah. Day thirty of. Yeah, so this is like a self-imposed art challenge okay. uh, where I had to draw three skulls a day for thirty days. Okay. Um, and it was, it was really fun, but also quite painful. Yeah, could imagine. Um, <laughs> not not the same three in the same three in the same no, positions. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, different positions. Sometimes animal. Ah, okay. Wow. Yeah, that is a really good challenge. Has anybody else taken that challenge, or is that something that you've come up with? Or, um, yeah, uh, Steve did it a little bit. Yeah. But otherwise, no, I didn't really take off as a thing. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine uh, 
drawing skulls every day for 30 days. Is, I'd say it's certainly an absolutely fantastic way to uh, to get your, your line work and your shadows and everything else. Yeah, definitely. And like, I usually warm up anyway mm -hmm. for about half an hour or so, so I thought I'd make it. Yeah, like a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen the trailer for the new He-Man? I haven't on Netflix? Actually, no. no. I was quite surprised. Um, I thought they might have done it an injustice like they did to Thundercats. <laughs> cool. Red Skull? Uh, Black Mask. Black Mask, okay. DC as opposed to Marvel. Ah, uh, right, okay. So, with, which you, so this is this is another debate that we we tend to to have is DC or Marvel. Um, I'm going to be really boring and just say I don't care. <laughs> I, I, like used both. To, I, I used to be quite tribal, um, yeah, yeah. and I preferred DC because um, mm -hmm. I thought that DC was cooler. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Batman's always been my thing, and it's but I, again, I don't, I'm not bothered. I kind of just kind of like. A superhero film. Yeah, <laughs> as, long there, as, it? as long as it's good, I don't really care. Yeah, yeah. As long from. as they've done it well. But uh, yeah, ba Batman is number one. To be fair. Yeah, yeah, Batman is pretty good. They, when they did redid the New Fifty Two, you read any of those New Fifty Two uh, comics, like Death in the Family and stuff? Yeah, I read uh, Death in the Family, but I mean, DC just annoy me because they seem to just reset every yeah, sort of ten years. So it often, makes yeah. you think. What's the point? <laughs> mm -hmm. I kind of liked it just because it, it was going back to a little bit more of the darker stuff. Yeah. It's kind of good. Um, I've got a few people in the chat saying, Kiss My Artichoke looks like Simon from Biffy, and then typed that before you said <laughs> they're really creative. Um, Funkatron, wait, what? New He Man? Yeah, Netflix. I think it's coming out in July. Yeah. They've rebooted um, He Man, and yeah, it actually Kevin's looks. Better, it? It's what, sorry? Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith, yeah. So because it's Kevin Smith's doing it, he's actually um, I think he's kept it sort of true to the as close as you possibly can with new technology and stuff to the original. Yeah. Uh, Kiss my jokes about both Marvel and DC, um, and then she, to, to Kiss my joke and Fun to Funkatron, yeah, man, it looks pretty cool. So yeah, it, it does, it does look really cool. Um, yeah, we've just said uh, Funkatron's put in the chat. I better not be like Thundercats. <laughs> just said that um, that it was that that thing was just. I don't even know what they were trying to achieve with that. It just made me cry inside. Um, day seven's Red Skull. Yeah. There we go. I was gonna say you can't have it. Yeah. Funkatron's just put in the chat. Cash grab. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So yeah, they're fantastic. Them skulls are absolutely fantastic. There we go. Penelope Bennett. Oh yeah. Um, so I the, on the current comic that I'm working on, mm -hmm. uh, I basically I've restarted it twice because yeah. I just made so many mistakes. And one of the mistakes I made was not thinking about like the characters before I start doing the comic. Yeah. Um, so I started to look into character design and make some characters first before I turn them into a story. That's a, it's an interesting way of working. So is that what you, how you do it then? You think of the character on yeah, well, well, that back, with the backstory first and then sort of bring that character to life? Yeah, so like, so this, this is sort of practice and just trying to think about characters and make them well-rounded rather than try not to make them into cliches and flat and 2D. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, but I mean, I I I didn't write this. Like a okay. friend who I worked with wrote it, and then I have reworked it and and going to be drawing it hopefully over the next year or so. I, I think I've just like you know, in, in just having a backstory for a character, I think it helps massively yeah. when it's when it comes to designing characters, doesn't it? Because at least you can think then, you know, what kind of clothes they're going to wear if they're from a particular environment what you know what they could be wearing certain type of boots for a swamp or a different type for a desert and stuff i suppose yeah exactly yeah it's really cool got a few few things in the chat as well gotta love a skull from kiss my joke yeah. uh funkatron mm, skulls are lifelike and then funkatron pizza on skull oh wait for it skull made out of pizza oh, okay fair interesting enough. interesting punisher there we go Loving the uh, superhero stuff today. I suppose you were, you know, comic book artists. 
you're gonna you're gonna know all about DC and Marvel, aren't you? I suppose. Yeah, although, I mean, since joining uni, um, Sue, who, for those who don't know, is one of the lecturers, um, basically told me to stay away from yeah. Marvel and DC um, and try and explore more indie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's obviously, you know, you might want to end up working for Marvel and DC at some point or 3000 AD, something like that. But you've got to be able to show that you can do something else, haven't you? You can't just sort yeah. of keep going with the same characters and that that just brings depth to to what you're doing and you can see that in the other characters that you've created yeah exactly well, that's um, is that grim have i got yeah. that right from yeah. uh, billy and mandy or whatever it's called it, billy and mandy yeah i i only know that because my kids watch <laughs> <laughs> and obviously i need to know these things teaching animation you know it's kind yeah. of <laughs> but it is a, it's a cracking cartoon cool really good some good stuff. More skulls, right? I think you've um, pencil. You've added pencil sketches to that as well. Yeah, they didn't come out very well. Well, it, I think it, it's you know the pencil sketch is great, and it, it, sometimes it's just take, the way you take a photograph, isn't it? It's difficult. Yeah. Difficult to take a, a really good picture of your sketchbook. Um, hey, Faye, me. What's your dream job within the comic book field? Um, I think I'd probably prefer to be a penciler because I think they okay. probably have the most freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at this point, anything. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Kiss My Artichokes, but Grimm is one of my all time favourite characters. Mm. Yeah, he's a really good character. Oh, International Women's Day, always. Uh... Was a good yeah, job. that was a, that was a uh, one of the assignments from uni. Oh right, okay. It's like a, a campaign called Generation Equality, mm -hmm. and we had to do a, a wordless yeah. one-page comic. Yeah, it works really well, doesn't it? Really good. Really good. I like the colours in that as well. It's really, uh, really quite vivid. All right, so we what we what we might what we'll do is probably come back to your Instagram account towards the end of the stream. Um, we've been talking now for about 20 minutes about your Instagram and stuff. So, should we, we'll jump into Clip Studio and yep. tell us a little bit about what you've got going on on the screen? Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I basically I plotted this out earlier today because um, just to save time, really. But mm -hmm. this is uh, going to hopefully be an illustration that I would eventually put in the book because um, uh, I for chapter headings, I'm going to do individual finished illustrations, and the book is basically about pirates. Um, so this is like a, a pirate, uh, what they call quarters on a ship. Oh, okay. That's the, uh, the idea anyway. But yeah, I, I'm obviously, I don't think anyone can figure out what this is yet, but I, I have some idea. But. <laughs> This basically this um, these squiggles will be here for ages because I find it easier just to figure stuff out while I'm scribbling around. I mean that's often a, a, a great way to start. It's just just getting a rough, just breaking up the page, isn't it? Just to sort of finding where things are, getting your baselines in there as well. Yeah, exactly. I've seen something recently um, about drawing faces and stuff. The, the, there's a di obviously people do it differently, but the, you know the correct way to draw a face, the wrong way, drawing eyes, nose, and stuff first often le leaves you with like a squashed head. Yeah. Um, whereas if you draw the head in first and then put the guidelines in, you sort of get in that correct shape, I suppose. Yeah, and it's always worth. Um doing the like the, the legwork first before you go into details i think it's really um tempting just to zoom in and figure out the details and then zoom out again it just looks like porridge yeah so funkatron's but i reckon it's a full ta a table full of booty nice <laughs> Um, and I think that was probably posted when we were saying, what are you going to do for us today? Um, <laughs> Nimbles has put, uh, it's kind of like a, a, an X and a D. So I'm assuming that's like a green face. 
um, <laughs> emoji. And hey, Femi has put, what brushes are you using? No, no, you're stealing my questions. Because um, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff we will ask you. So what brush are you currently using? Uh, I'm just using the standard pencil brush. Um, yeah. I don't tend to get too fancy with the brushes. Okay. Um, so I, usually if I was coloring in Photoshop or whatever, it would just be like a hard round brush and hard soft brush. And that's pretty much it. All right. Okay. So it is quite kind of like, so you, you, you don't go down the rabbit hole of searching for brushes. No, not really. I mean, <laughs> if, if I want something specific, I might look for a, a specific brush, like a cloud yeah. brush or whatever. But um, generally speaking, no, I just prefer to... I, I want to do have more influence over what I'm doing. So how do you how do you find uh, Clip Studio over Photoshop? Then is that is it something that you prefer? Because I think was it Haley said that you um, Haley from a couple of weeks ago, and I th I'm assuming Hey Fei Me on the chat is also Haley, who yeah. did the Twitch stream um, a few weeks ago. So I think it was you that she said got got her onto um, Clip Studio in the first place. So is yeah. that? I, I prefer Clip Studio to drawing, because mm -hmm. um, I just think that the drawing side of things are really, really intuitive. Yeah. Um, and like, if I'm coloring in a, a comic, then I'll transition over to Photoshop, because um, when I'm flatting a comic, yeah. um, so just assigning different bits of the drawing with different colors, I tend to use the lasso tool, right. and lasso tool in Photoshop is much better. I think yeah. Um, it's here. Yeah, I, I I tend to use Photoshop just for scribbling notes and stuff when I'm doing any of these streams. And the lasso tool is brilliant. To be fair, yeah. I can move things around and just um, do what I need to do. But it seems it does seem to be the, the go-to program for illustrators, comic artists on the on the program. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's taking over mm -hmm. from Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, because it used to be called Manga Studio. Yeah. So I can see why they've changed the name of it to try and uh, bring in more people. But I haven't looked at it recently myself. It, it's got so many features on it that it's impressive. It's an impressive piece of software, considering how cheap it is as well. Yeah, definitely. Although, I mean, that being said, like I, I only really look into the stuff that I need. Like I have no idea what half these buttons do. Right. Okay. I just don't really need them. Same with Photoshop. It's like a a pen, eraser, lasso tool. I don't really know how to do anything else. <laughs> hey, Faye, me in the chat has put, it's the best. There you go. Yeah, it's good. It is, it's, um, I think it, it, it is, it's kind of like, I say shouldn't say horses for courses because it's something that, it's one of them cliche bloody sayings, isn't it? It's kind of, um, but yeah, it, you know, just using the tools that you need is is often just as good as learning every single button and tool, and you're never using ninety percent of it. Yeah, exactly. Like I tend to, if there's something that I need to figure out, then I'll Google that specific thing. Right. Okay. Yeah, because if I find re recently that the amount of tutorials that are online. The amount of things, if you get stuck with any tool, you just press F1 on, on your keyboard and you find the help section. It's either, it'll either give you a description of what it does or someone's done a video of it, even just yeah. even as soon as it's been released. We had Photoshop, um, Twitter, I can't remember what version it is now, but it literally updated the other day and there was a new tool on it and they just Googled it and someone had already done a video. <laughs> so it's just like, okay. <laughs> That's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube is a mecca mm, absolutely absolutely so I asked you this question on, on um, Saturday when we did the work that were on that challenge how did you find out about the course that you're currently on yeah um, it was simply because I, I followed uh, Dan Berry mm -hmm. he's obviously a very good yeah, comic yeah. artist himself um, and I had no idea that 
comics could be a thing that can be taught in a university. Yeah. Um, well, he was kind of the pioneer of it in the yeah, yeah. In the university. Um, so I, I googled uh, the the college, the university that he worked mm-hmm. at, and then one thing led to another, and then now here. Yeah, yeah. So where are you based? Then are you are you do you live in North Wales? Do you are you uh, from? I'm on the edge, so I'm in a little village called Wrighton, sort of like between Oswestry and Bass Church. Okay. It's about a 40 minute drive. Yeah. yeah. That little notification then was a Xbox award. <laughs> Just I didn't realise right. that my Xbox thing was attached and it was going to ping and give me notifications. <laughs> Someone's playing Xbox in the other room, clearly. So, um, so what have been the highlights of studying uh, on your course? Uh, the main thing is meeting other artists has mm. by far been the best thing because um, they can they just make you better um, and you realise that there are so many different styles and so many different ways of looking at things. Yeah, because it seems that you've you. You've had, you've got a quite quite a close knit sort of circle of friends going on as well within yeah. the illustration sec, uh, area as well because li- literally as soon as I put on the on the on the group chat about doing an art challenge, it was like straight away the three of you, you Steve and Haley, were like all over it. <laughs> I'm doing that. I'll do that. I, I, and it seems to be quite competitive as well. Yeah, it's because we secretly hate each other. <laughs> yeah. So who would you say won the art challenge on Saturday? Oh, I couldn't say that. <laughs> um, I think everyone won. But, and this is this is the reason why we didn't pick winners on the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just imagine coming in and sort of like scowling at each other because we didn't quite beat them in the art challenge. Yeah. So currently Drawing a skull, you should be an expert at drawing skulls now. So this this skull should be amazing when it comes out. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, you've just drawn. When did your ninety days end? Was that a while ago? Uh, yeah, that was a couple of months ago now, I think. Okay. So, how have you found studying at a small, small university? I suppose I usually ask studying in Wales, but you're sort of right on the border of Wales, aren't you? But yeah. Um. So how? Because I mean. Obviously, being where you are situated, you know, there is other comic courses out there. So, how, you know, how have you found studying in, in this university? Uh, well, I mean, I don't necessarily have anything to compare it to, but uh, I like the fact that it's small. Because mm-hmm. um, I think if I was in like a classroom with 100 people, I'd find that I'd get lost in the shuffle a lot. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so it's a lot easier to sort of ask questions and to learn on a more one-to-one basis. Well, I was talking to another member of staff today and they were saying about the the previous university they worked at, there's 200 students in uh, a classroom and they literally had 15 minute tutorials. It'd take him like a week to do it all, but they literally had 15 minutes with him. That was it. Yeah, that's... You know, it's kind of (laughs) when you think how much time our students get with with lecturers and stuff, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, it's um, certainly strange. Hey, fame me in the chat, but John won. There we go. <laughs> so you got a fan in uh, in the even even in the midst of your sort of rival rivalry little gang. <laughs> Cheers, Amy. Yeah. She probably said the same to Steve. To be fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what made you get into comics? Uh, I don't know really I actually don't know um, I think it's there's no limit to what you can do which mm-hmm. is I find quite nice and I, I like the idea of storytelling um, yeah. and yeah that's pretty much it I mean I know you can, you can tell stories through an illustration and stuff but I find it a bit more satisfying through more sequential art yeah, yeah. and like, I did like silly little comics when I was a kid I suppose it just sort of grew from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something something nice if I've been able to tell a story through your images. It's kind of 
that's something that we do all, with, well because the animators and the illustrators work quite closely together anyway we have the odd lesson together and stuff so you know narrative is something that we do in the first year isn't it so it's kind of making sure you getting those stories right I suppose and making it making it appealing to an audience yeah Golden Guy 9 in the chat has put that's amazing and I'm assuming that's a little emote of uh, Bob Ramos that's next <laughs> <laughs> So you said this is for the current comic that you're working on. Yeah. So, because you finished now, and you finished for the year, you, you're not back until October, beginning of yeah. October. So, is this something that you're doing as a personal project? Yeah, it's the same. I've sort of been I've been noodling away at it for like the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've, I've restarted it twice. Um, okay. And, uh, but. I'm not going to restart it anymore. I've told myself. This is it. This is the, this is going to be the final thing. So, what's it going to be when it's finished? Is it going to be like a web comic? Is it going to be a physical? Um, probably both. I'd like. Uh, I mean, I I like reading comics in my hand and feeling the pages. Uh, I mean, web web comics are great, but yeah. nothing really beats having the comic in your hand. I think the, so that's the smell like. of a new comic. Yeah, exactly. Um, but obviously, that depends really on things like demand and printing costs and all that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. well there's talk there's been a few ideas floated about about um us having our own print glendor print or um some sort of publishing company within the university so that could be something that and obviously when we get back on campus we do have a bindery which mm. means you can put some yeah. um of your, your comics together yourself i suppose yeah that'd be awesome because we're currently um, the building's been sort of put into containers at the moment because the we're having some building work which starts next week. They're ripping out the entire foyer and having a new coffee shop, gallery, all that sort of stuff. Um, so then we're going to look at uh, reimagining some of the spaces as well. What 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 could the bindery look like and putting in, investment into that as well. So making sure that there is some stuff there and then potentially online shops and things like that so people can buy merch and comics and things and student work through that That'd so, be great. you know something that we definitely need to do because we, we have so many amazing students that have got amazing work that needs to be out there and sold so you're right so do you take on commissions uh yes yeah um i've recently because on facebook i've open some commissions because that's usually where I get most of my yeah. uh, people who want stuff but yeah they want oh. something to do in so that is, and that's on your Facebook page yeah um, it? like it's the same name as the Instagram okay so, so if anyone is looking to um, commission you to do something or buy some work then certainly check that out well, what does a commission tend generally look like? That what do people ask for? Is that? Um, I, I haven't had many actually at all. Mm. Um, the last thing I drew was I drew someone's dog. Um, okay. So which that was... does that does seem to be the go-to thing. People want yeah. to draw their dog. Well, I don't understand. I, I've got a dog. I, I don't want him drawn. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could, you know what I mean? It's kind of. I think I would rather have the kids in superhero costumes or something. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's kind of one of the, it's one of them, isn't it? It's um, but I suppose you know, people might think, why would you want to do that to your kids? Um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, in terms of like comic book ideas, if someone had a comic book idea, would you would you be sort of interested in taking on board that, or would it need to be um, a specific theme or story or? Uh, no, I mean I'm pretty pretty open. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have any prejudices. Prejudices. Yeah. yeah. However, that word it says. Um, but uh, the problem with comics is they take so long yeah. to do. Yeah. Um, so I mean, if someone wants like some concept art or anything, then yeah, definitely. But like, a, even just a thirty-page comic is quite a big commitment. Mm -hmm. um, so most people ask, you know typically ask you to do things for free 
Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, it's the unfortunate thing, isn't it? It's when you shouldn't do things. You know, if you're good at something, don't do it for free. Yeah. There's a, a, a good quote from uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very topical as well for comedy. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a, a good point. Yeah, got away with words, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, or it did. Very sad. Yeah. Amazing stuff. So, um, Nimbles in the chat has been timed out for 120 seconds. So, uh, it's usually, if that's happened to you, you've either used caps lock or your message has been really long. So, I do apologize for if you've put something that didn't need to be moderated. Um, so, can you remember the first comment you read? Uh, it'll probably uh, Asterix and Obelisk. Yeah. It's probably the first, yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you, does, has that made an impact on you in any way? Uh, not really, actually, no. no. Um, like, not not for us. I mean, obviously, it's it's a legendary uh, comic. Mm -hmm. uh, admire it a lot, but it hasn't necessarily had an influence on me artistically or anything. Like, my parents read a lot of um, Terry Pratchett books. Yeah. So, and I, I loved, I was just always drawn to the artwork there. I think it's Paul Kidby, I think, was the yeah. artist. Yeah. Um, so he was the first artist that I remember, like really, really, really loving. But then it was, you know, mm -hmm. um, superheroes, comic books. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if you're into comic books, it's kind of like shelves and shelves of them. Yeah. Um, when I was clearing out the office, I was saying we were having some building work done. Uh, there is literally bo there was literally boxes full of 2000 AD comics <laughs> that were just on the shelf. Brilliant. And you, what was the last comic you read? Uh, I bought. Um, so Keanu Reeves has recently put out a comic, mm -hmm. uh, and I was quite intrigued. So I bought the first oh, two wow. issues of that. I think yeah. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's like Berserker or something. Wow. Okay. Um, and it's it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Where is it? Where is it? Would you recommend it? Is it worth going and rushing out and going to get it? Um, <laughs> yeah i think so like i mean it's it's only like two or three quid or whatever because mm -hmm. uh, they're just like floppies but um it's yeah it's like an, an act if you like action you like violence and stuff then it's, it'll be right up your alley so what um where, where do you get your comics from is that an online thing or yeah like so there was a shop in shrewsbury called infinity and beyond and mm -hmm. um, i'd like to go there and obviously want to support your local comic shops but of course that's closed um yeah so it's just forbidden planet at the moment especially during lockdown um so lagger bro let's put lagger let's put bro in the chat and do you follow the euro I'm assuming they, they the may be talking. Hey, I mean, it's either the dollar or the football, because I know Wales are playing today. Um, yeah, probably, probably around about the same time. I haven't. If anyone knows the score, then put it in. The, feel free to put it in the chat. It's not. It's not something I follow football because obviously being Welsh, it's kind of rugby. Mm. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's but it's kind of. Um, you know, we still still support and everything. Uh, Kiss my aunt chose to put uh, worth the risk for less than the price of a coffee. So I think yeah. I, if that's something I'm probably going to go and uh, look for. I'm actually jotted it down and uh, I'm going to be <laughs> buying that. It's a little berserk, yeah. So did you what, did you did you watch the Umbrella Academy? Uh, yeah, I, I I didn't get through it though. It did yeah. lose me. I've got to admit. Yeah, because that's um, Gerard Way. Gerard, yeah, Gerard Way. Yeah, from um, My Chemical, Chemical Romance. Yeah, which was quite interesting because it was his comic, wasn't it? And then they, they yeah. sort of turned it uh, round. So, um, Lager's put. I, I think it's Lager, or is it Lager? Or so I'm not sure. Tell us if I'm wrong. I, I'm terrible with names. I do apologise. Your country's kicking ass. You obliterated Turkey. Uh, hey, fam, me's put two nil to Wales. Nice. And then um, Lager's put three. Bravo, Wales. So yeah, very good. Good. Good stuff. So I have no. I I think that doesn't that take them top of the table or something like that by four points. They've got they've got four points or something like that because they'd be. Drew the other day, I'm not sure, I can't remember. 
Yeah, I just, I, I've taken a bit of an interest in the local football team now that sort of Ryan Reynolds and oh, yeah. his mate have just joined in. Um, so I do I do have him on Twitter and they do sort of see who the transfers now. But apart from that, I, I literally I don't know much about football. I play a bit of FIFA now and again if I've got it. Um, but that's about it for me, football. However, if you want to talk about rugby, <laughs> no, probably not the stream to be doing it on. Um, yeah. See the shade on that skull is pretty cool. Yeah, like I'm still in mm. in line for loose mode. Yeah. Um, but just yeah, figuring out like where the light sources are coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting scene that because you've got multiple light sources potentially. Yeah. Um, candles and lanterns, and if there's any hatches or anything, portholes or whatnot. Interesting. So we, we've talked about DC and the MCU and stuff like that. So, and the MCU at the moment just seems to be massive. What's your take on that, you know, in comparison to like DC and things? Uh, I think what Marvel's done that DC hasn't is that they focused on the characters mm -hmm. rather than the spectacle. Yeah. Um, like, because spectacle is cool and makes you go ooh and ah, but mm -hmm. if you don't really care about the characters, then yeah, yeah. people aren't going to go back for more. And I think that's like DC, like, nobody really cares that much about those characters I think well I mean I know that I don't particularly care about them uh, I mean I love the characters yeah, yeah. the comics but the films just aren't grabbing me no I, I kind of get I kind of get it I feel the same way it's I mean Ben Affleck as as the as Batman really didn't capture my attention at all no um when they suggested Michael Keaton coming back then you know so let's have a conversation like yeah yeah but, you know, I think that's something that MCU have really done well is is cast amazing cast um, the right people for the right character. Yeah. You know, it's kind of and even to the point where they've changed Ant Man. Yeah. Uh, and Hank Pym's like an older older man that's kind of like the same age possibly as what what Tony Stark's uh, dad would have been. Yeah. Um, and then brought in someone new. Um. Kiss my actual said you're making that look so easy. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. And Nimble's finally out of uh, moderator jail, as per uh, Yay Keaton forever. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Michael Keaton, best Batman. Yeah, who's yeah. the best? Who's the best Joker? Uh, I've got to give it to Heath Ledger. Yeah. Yeah. The Joker's um, a difficult one, isn't it? It's kind of. It is a very difficult character because yeah. you can play it so many different ways. Kiss my heart, jokes, but Keaton is the best Batman for sure. Yeah. I agree. I mean, to be fair, the, the best joke is Mark Hamill, but the best like mm. actor yeah. Um, is well, yeah. yeah, Mark Hamill is the Joker. Even in the games, it's great. Yeah. You know the voice and the, you know, it's. it's, very it's like, good. To, to be fair, like likewise, Kevin Conroy is my Batman. Mm. Um, but yeah, for the actors, it has to be mm -hmm. key. Yeah. Because my jokes put Ledger. Uh, see, I, I, I do like a Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I, I like Jack Nicholson. But it, it, again, it's come two completely different Jokers. Yeah. You know, I think Joaquin Phoenix had a, um, and Jared Leto had a tough deal. Yeah. I think Jared Leto fell down with the costume and that <laughs> laugh. I don't know what that was about. Uh, apart from that, he could have been a really good Joker. Um better in the Schneider cut I think yeah I never watched the Schneider cut the and I think the, he got really that, annoyed didn't he Jared Leto yeah, yeah. apparently they cut a load of his stuff yeah again <laughs> yeah yeah they cut they cut a load of his stuff again and and he didn't um, he, he wasn't too happy that they made a Joker film with, without him <laughs> but I still I stand by this. This is really going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons now, but the Joker film with Black and Phoenix was not a Joker film. Yeah, it's no, I know what you mean. Absolutely not, because no way, I'm not having it. 
<laughs> just not having it. It was just not, not, and it was. I just didn't. I just didn't. It, you know, if he would have been in a Batman film, then great, and the storyline would have been better because he could have probably he would he would have made a good Joker, but the storyline was not not a Joker film. No, I, I know what you mean. I, I think there are certain characters who just don't need or shouldn't have their own solo film. It's like I never want to watch a, a Hulk film. Yeah. I just don't think it needs it. I think he's a better no, supporting no. character. But I think Mark Ruffalo is the best yes. Hulk. Yeah. Absolutely, by far. And I think he plays it well, because like Thor Ragnarok, I thought was, was probably one of my best films, one of yeah. my favourites. Yeah. And I think they brought the... And when they made Thor more comical, I thought that lifted that character right out, because the first few were a little bit... Mm, I could take you or leave Thor, but then when they started making him funny... I think uh, Taika Waititi has done a fantastic job. Yeah, he has. He's basically saved that franchise. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see um, what the new Suicide Squad is going to be like with yeah. James, James Gunn directing with his humour that he brought to Guardians of the Galaxy. So a few people, uh, the chat's going off. It's like Funkatron Nicholson for the gangster style. Um... Uh, but Leto's laugh, I'm assuming that was Leto's laugh was stupid. Heath made a good Joker. Um, Shagsy won a once, but Nicholson the best Joker. Um, and then Nimble's test audience hate him. That's why they cut his scenes. I mm. suppose, yeah. That, that's um, Shagsy won a one. Lou Ferrigno as the, the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> Classic uh, from Nimble's one one there. Um, hey Faye me, Jack Nicholson for sure. It was more focused on mental health for that Joker film. Yeah, it was. It was. It was about mental health, wasn't it? And and, and also victimization, bullying, all that sort of stuff. Um, so which was which was good to bring that to the attention. But I think they shouldn't have done it using the Joker. Maybe. Um, don't know. That's just you know that's one of them, isn't it? Do you do you, do you go to many comic book conventions or comic cons? Uh. Usually, I, I, I tended to miss them because they're so expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but before the world went crazy, I went mm -hmm. to uh, Thought Bubble. Mm -hmm. And that was that, really good. Definitely going to go there. That's got more of an industry focus, I think, isn't it, Thought Bubble? Yeah. Yeah, because like, Comic Con is great and everything, but it seems that the main focus on that is just the films all the time, yeah, yeah. rather than it's, source material. Yeah, it can, it can go down the route of a lot of times looking at the celebrities. Yeah. Uh, who were there getting people getting signing autographs and then the comic artists get sort of pushed in the back corner yeah I found that with um, the MCM comic cons quite often we would always be like hunting around for where the artists were so they'd always be like in the little corner at the back when it first yeah. started um, San Diego is someone I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely love to go to San Diego comic yeah I'd just, 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 just once you know what I mean I wouldn't like yeah. to I'd like to do what they did on Paul and just go in an RV and then yeah. <laughs> find an alien along the way. <laughs> you know? Have you seen that film? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. But yeah, well, so what, in the current climate, obviously, um, we've had to go online with a lot of stuff. So how do you think that's going to affect Comic Cons in the future? Um, I, don't I, I don't know, actually. It's a good question. Mm. I mean, it seems the world's opening up, so... Mm -hmm. I imagine that they'll try and get back to normal as much as possible, but maybe just a limited capacity. But they did uh, they did Comic Cons and stuff online last year, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, so there's quite a few. Um, animation like, festivals and um, exhibitions and stuff all went sort of virtual. Yeah. Which is, um, and I think um, Kismayacho is agreeing with you a little bit there. They, they're really expensive and I find it's more about showing off the bigger films rather than the comics. Yeah. And I think that's something that Thought Bubble sort of, you know, it's not very well known, but you get a lot more independent people. Yeah, definitely. I know. Uh, and uh, Golden Guy Nine has asked a very um, good question because it's literally going off again in the chat. What's your favourite movie from the eighties? Uh, I'm not even sure you're old enough to. No, I'm not. I'm, to I'm be not, around I'm, in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a nineties kid. Yeah, yeah, so um, I think Haley's in the same boat there, but but people still probably have. Um, so Shagsy one ones, but the Goonies and Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters is a good shout. Hey, Faye, me Gremlins, um, and then Nimbles was put Thor Bubble was fantastic. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. 
So do you have a, a favourite 80s movie, even though you weren't around in the 80s? Uh, not really. Uh, Ghostbusters is a really good shot. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? What did you make of the new one coming out? Uh, the one that came out with like Melissa McCarthy. No, they, they're actually uh, doing one with Paul Rudd, aren't they? It's, they're trying again, aren't they? Oh, okay. Yeah, th this time it's going to be more about. I think it's they are the sort of children of the Ghostbusters. All right, okay. Um, I doubt I'll watch so, it, guys. Like, yeah. I mean, I I don't mind a reboot, but yeah. at the same time, I quite like the idea of people telling new stories mm -hmm. would be nice. Yeah, and I think that's, again, that, that's where comics come into it massively, isn't yeah. it? New, brand new stories, new narrative. Get your film ideas from the from the new comics that are coming out. Yeah, hopefully. Mm, absolutely. Shaggy's put too many 80s films to mention. Hey, Faye me, I brought up the 80s. I was brought up in the, I was brought up on the 80s, sorry, I was going to say. Um, Shaggy 101, Ghostbusters Afterlife is what it's called. Okay. Uh, Golden Guy 9, Flight of the Navigator. Uh, and Shagsy101 is granddaughter of Egon, is the storyline. Okay. And I think this time, um, I always forget his name. You know the guy who played Ray? Oh, yeah. Uh, he oh, is. He's, he's, I think he's involved in it because obviously he wrote it with the original. Because like, it was based loosely on his family, I think, because he's a bit of a. Um, they, were, they were ghost hunters. All right. Okay. Um, so he's, he's involved in the writing and stuff as well. So I think it's going to be. Kiss my Artichokes, Robocop. Hey, Femi, Paul Rudd for the win. Um, Green with Shagsy as well. And then uh, Dan Aykroyd. Shagsy's one put in the chat. So that's um, answered that question. So that, that completely went off track <laughs> with, you know, talking about the MCU, 80s films, Ghostbusters. Uh, absolutely nothing to do with comics or... Yeah. Popular culture, I suppose, is is a good way. I think, but yeah, thought bubble is definitely something that we um, we need to start thinking about getting getting more students involved in as well. I take it you went as a visitor and didn't have a stand at thought bubble. No, I didn't have a stand. That's would, that's the the goal is to get um, a stand. So that that's it. That is the future plan. Yeah. Cool. Um, I I'm not too sure on the costs and what stands are in thought bubble. But the um, I think vaguely remember something about 170 pound at Wales Comic Con. Uh, yeah, for the I, table. I'm fairly sure it's cheaper than Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the thing is, though, I mean, there's you, you've you've got the you've got the the the, the three of you um, as a group. There's nothing stopping you from the first event going as a as a, as a team. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm having a table together, so it sort of reduces the costs and and if you haven't got that um, you know amount of work right now because you're still working on stuff, it sort of increases the the, the work that's on the tables as well. So it's not that's true. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we'll more than likely talk about in Creative Futures because that's when I've got you next for your your classes. Create Futures 3, Semester 2. Yeah, uh, hey, me looking great. Thank you. And Shagsy101, speaking of art and Ghostbusters, the illustrations in Tobin's Spirit Guide are great. There we go. Okay. Something to check out. So, going back to drawing and stuff, what, what age did you start drawing? Uh, I can't remember. It was very young. Like uh, the first things I remember drawing are Sonic and The Simpsons, because uh, I buy Sonic the comic and obviously play the game. And The Simpsons is awesome. It was one of those where like uh, friends and stuff will encourage you, and then that makes you feel good, so you just draw more. Yeah. yeah. So did you say Simpsons are awesome? Yeah. Awesome. Old Simpsons, not yeah. New Simpsons. Not New Simpsons, no. Because no. I couldn't believe how that it's still going. I know. I mean, I don't, I don't know how it's still going. I remember that as in the nineties as a child when they were, um, they were using it as an advert to sell sky dishes. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Who's got a sky dish anymore? Yeah. You know, it's kind of it's weird, isn't it? When you think. 
Um, Golden Guy Nines asks, Sonny, if this has already been asked, but what's your favourite comic or comics? Uh, favourite comic? Hmm. I, suppose, I don't think we've asked that, have we? We've asked, what's the first comic, what was the last comic, and I don't think I've asked you what your favourite one is. Favourite comic? Uh, I mean, I was sort of more of a graphic novel person, because I can never keep up with a comic mm -hmm. series, because I forget about it, and then I it would mm -hmm. go out of print. Um, but graphic novel for ages, my favorite graphic novel was Hush, uh, mm -hmm. which is a Batman comic mm -hmm. or graphic novel. Yeah. But uh, recently, uh, I bought a graphic novel called Southern Bastards, okay. uh, and that's really, really good. I definitely recommend that. Can't remember who's by though. It's a bit annoying. So, a Google search if anyone's interested. Yeah. In that sort of thing. yeah. It sounds good. Yeah, graphic novels are. Um... I've always, you know, it, it, it's. I don't know, it's something about a graphic novel, isn't it, that you don't get from a, an actual novel, I suppose. I mean, even down to like Watchmen and V for Vendetta, I thought mm. it was it was a cracking sort of graphic novel. Uh, Golden Guy Nine's X Men for me, so. I think it's, it is, t especially when it comes to Marvel and DC, it's so tricky to keep, keep up to date with. Like we were talking about like the reboots and stuff every two minutes and yeah. you know, different timelines, different multiverses and, and whatever else. It's so difficult to try and keep track of what you're reading at any one time. Um, if someone new to reading comics, when they come to jump into it, it's where do you start? Yeah, exactly. You know, it can be really sort of confusing. And you've got expensive as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you but if you've got a good like little indie comic shop, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Funkatron, Ninja High School and Gold Digger for me. Go. Okay, not heard of these. Mm. No, I've not heard of them. Good stuff. So, because you mentioned Shoesby before, I mean, that's kind of like the one of the go to places at the moment for comics, isn't it? I mean, yeah. The... Uh, I, I had absolutely no idea that was the case. Yeah. Um, but I started to go to uh, a life drawing class mm -hmm. in Shrewsbury before, yeah. obviously, COVID. Um, and that's where I was able to... Um, that's how I f figured out who Dan Berry was. Yeah, yeah. Because he would go. Mm -hmm. And um, Charlie Adler would go as well. Yeah. Well, to the same life drawing class. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I did, like, a, a double take and sort of fanboyed at him for a little while. <laughs> he used to say to me when I first started, he's like... I'm a little bit famous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you got recognised quite a bit. Yeah. yeah no, he is he's very, very, good. very nice bloke, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. But like, he did, uh, he started a um, his own little convention thing in Shrewsbury. Mm -hmm. But they took over the whole town, and it's called uh, Comics Olympia. Yeah. And, who uh, who that's, was that, that's, sorry? Is that Charlie or Dan? That's, yeah, Charlie, that's yeah. Charlie. I'd, 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 I don't know if Dan's involved in that, actually. He I might think he, he more than will, likely will be. They're good friends, aren't they? Yeah. Because they um, just shortly, just before Dan left the university, he um, he got, he nominated Charlie for a fellowship and he's, he's oh, okay. actually a fellow of the university. And for, for people who are not, who are not, have not heard of Charlie Adler before, he's the guy who did the Walking Dead comics. Mm. And also writes on Fear the Walking Dead and that new spin off they've just done as well. So he's now one of the writers on that. So, a guy from Shrewsbury, which is like literally, what, half an hour down the road? Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it, when you think? And I remember Dan telling me that, you know, like, Charlie wasn't even going to take the job. He was literally up and on and over, like, doing a zombie comic. <laughs> um,. I bet he would have absolutely kicked himself if he had turned that job down. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's kind of made him a few quid. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. Yeah. Very good. Uh, she actually won a one in the chance, but Batman the Killing Joke is one of my faves. Yeah, that's a good chap. Golden Guy Nines for all the new Avengers. That's a good one. There you go. Okay. Loads of recommendation from the chat. We seem to have quite a few comic fans in there watching That's today. Good. That's good. Always good. So, how often do you draw? Uh, every day. Yeah. 
Yeah, I get really uh, antsy if I don't draw. Well, okay. That's interesting. I mean, because I, I always get... I, I've mentioned this in the Twitch streams before. Um, you know, it, it's... We get shoot, we get people in all the time say, so, oh, I can't draw. And then you say, how often do you draw? Oh, I don't draw because I can't draw. It's like, well... <laughs> Um, how do you how are you going to get better if you don't draw? Well, exactly. And, and uh, you know, conversations today, even with, with with students saying, you know, just just have a go, just yeah. practice, it, just you know, try it. It doesn't even have to be perfect. No. I mean, most of us will say, like, mo you know, whether we're product designers, whether we're animators, whatever. Most artists will tell you they can't draw because they're constantly comparing themselves to somebody else who they think's better than them yeah i think a lot of the time it's confidence as well and just yeah. the ability to to practice no, i've got to say i i am guilty of that as well just constantly comparing yourself to people yeah, yeah. like... it's such a i don't know it's kind of one of the traits of an art of an artist isn't it? it's you know constantly being tough on yourself and yeah. so imposter syndrome i think that's it's it, quite yeah. it's quite rife amongst artists. Yeah, for sure. And it's and it's it's hard, isn't it? It's just not good. It's not a good, not a good place to be. No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there's a few things going on in the chat. In, um, Killing Joe, Funkatron, Killing Joke is a good one. Um, Funkatron, where's my turtle fan? It's that. Shagsy one hundred one. What's the turtles? Oh God, so there's some conversations there. You go. Hey, fa hey, fa me. How do you decide the, the colours for the artwork? Is that pre-planned? For this artwork, mm. or because I'm not using colour? Well, just <laughs> um, in general, I suppose. Because yeah, this is a black. Is this a black and white piece? Yeah. Yeah, I might put colour over the top. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, I don't. I don't pre-plan colours really. I just sort of throw things down and then yeah. if. It looks good. I stick with it. If not, I mean that's one of the benefits of digital is you can just tweak and yeah, yeah. push things around. Do you ever do you ever like Im implement color theory, or is it just a case of what looks good? Uh, it's pretty much a case of what looks good. Um, but no, I don't. I don't really do color theory. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, most of the time I'm I'm just doing line work anyway, so I haven't had as much experience with color. Right. Okay. So it's not something that I can use particularly well. Yeah, it can be tricky color, can't it? It's, there's, there's some there's some websites out there you can use that will help you out. Like Adobe Color is pretty decent. Yeah. Like, that's one I recommend all the time, is, especially when you're going for certain color palettes and complementary colors and uh, opposites and stuff like that. Yeah. So... Um, Shagsy101, not sure, but if this has been said, this artwork reminds me of Monkey Island. Oh, okay. Okay, um, Funkatron's, but yes. So, this is going to be, is this kind of going to be now your summer project? You talked about this to me. Yeah, and hopefully it's something that I'll be able to do in the third year. Yeah. Um, as much as possible. How big do you envisage this going to be? Is this like a 70-page um, comic, or is this? Uh, a... I imagine it'll be. I mean, probably a hundred-page, um, maybe more. Depends really. Because you, yeah, you, when we with in your second year, we do this making a living, don't we, with the creator with uh, Kickstarter mm. videos and stuff. Is, could this be something that you would put on to Kickstarter and to see if you could get like a bit of a? Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely give it a go. A back in. For sure, yeah. And obviously now you know how to do it, don't you? Because you've just had lessons on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but now getting an audience is just so, so hard. But I, sp I spoke to someone recently, actually. Someone who, who Dan, who introduced, got introduced through Dan, actually. Um, and they were saying that they've, they, had, they went through Kickstarter for their studio. Um, and, and it failed but yeah. their investor that they've now got wants to invest like a million quid into their business just wow. based on their Kickstarter they didn't want it to be a Kickstarter thing, they, they would rather it be a separate thing 
Oh, wow, so they haven't got like, loads of people that they've got to then sort of appease. So that was quite cool. Yeah. So, would you class yourself as, as a digital artist rather than a traditional artist? Uh, yeah, I mean, digital is definitely the thing that I do like 90% of the time. Yeah. It's just purely because it's, it's quicker, it's more convenient. I don't have to buy paper and pencils. Mm -hmm. And you, it's a one, it's a one-off payment for your license as well, I suppose, for this. Exactly, yeah. Because we were talking before about you doing, you would, you've done some game stuff as well, haven't you? With um, yeah, 3ds Max and ZBrush and stuff. So they could be quite expensive when you, when you're out on your own in the big wide world. Yeah. I think that the the last time I checked on a Maya subscription it was like 150 quid a month or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Well above my budget. Mm. It's good fun doing game art though, to be fair. I did really enjoy it. Well, and a lot of comic artists are using it as well, actually. A lot of what, sorry? Comic artists are using uh, Yeah, yeah. Programs. It's something that I, when I was doing, when I used to teach game art, it was something that I um, used to teach the concept artists, mm. was to block out a scene in, in like something like this, where you can just go, and get free assets off, off like Turbo Squid or something. Just put them all together and chuck them on the table, position them to where you want them. Do a real quick, you could do one or two, you can either screen grab it or you can put the lighting in and do a quick render, whip it over to Photoshop and then draw over the top. Yeah. And you, you everything's there. Your perspective, your, your light source, shadows, everything. There's no, no messing about. Incredibly useful. I actually bought a, um, a a model of a pirate ship from Turbo Squid uh, in Blender. So then, because I mean, getting photos is great and everything, but the fact that yeah. I've got the model there, I can put the camera wherever I want it. Yeah, and you can get all sorts of shots. And I think this is what's yeah. good about Clip Studio is the three D stuff that they've got built into this as well. Yeah, I need to look into that actually because I've no idea. Yeah, how yeah. well, Rebecca, who was who's finished, who's graduating now who was our first person on the Twitch stream. She uses the, the models to make to make sure her characters are in the right positions and poses. It's a good idea. It's, it's kind of like using, it's the old school bendy man, but actually in the software. Yeah. You know, it's really, really good that you can just get your, get it all right first time, isn't it? Rather than sort of having to draw, draw and redraw it again because your perspective's quite a little bit off or... Um, you haven't quite got the shadows right, hasn't you? Exactly. So how do you how do you work this now? Is this a, a full page, or is this going to be like one panel? No, yeah, this will be a full page thing. Okay. Uh, and like, so like this would be a, a chapter thing. So like uh, down here, I'd have like chapter one or whatever. I'd be okay. like, and then. Onto the next scene. Cool. So in, when it when it comes to doing, do you set out your panels first, uh, so you know the sizes, or do you do you draw like a full page and then scale it down? Uh, well, I tend to. I don't know if that's gonna show. I tend to like rough out the panels yeah. first. So okay. yeah, that that's pretty much how I'd lay out like an individual page, just like mm. really really loose. Um, figure out roughly where the speech bubbles are going to go mm -hmm. and then come back and develop it because I what I do before is I draw each individual panel to completion yep. um, and then I'd realize after like three or four hours oh wait he was wearing a hat before and now he's not wearing a hat <laughs> yeah so it would just take so much longer yeah, whereas yeah. doing this way you can just like just do a little squiggle for a head yeah a second and, and your panels are kind of I wouldn't say they were I'm not, I'm not sure of the terminology because obviously I don't teach comics and stuff, but it's, you know, they're not all sort of symmetrical and one panel after. They're kind of like a storyboard. It's not like a storyboard. Yeah. Is it, where one panel after the next. What do you call that when it's the panels are slightly different on each page? Is there a word for that or not? Uh, no idea. Asymmetrical, maybe. I've no yeah. idea. But, um, but yeah, like it, it, everything about this is, is totally loose and all of this yeah. could change. Yeah. Um, but it's. Yeah, it's better to do it this way for sure. Yeah, yeah. 
It does. It makes it a lot more dynamic, doesn't it? When you when you move the the, yeah. the panels around and change the focal points and stuff. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's certainly interesting, in, you know, watching you know, something that you a lot of us have taken for granted for years, just buying a comic book and sitting and reading it for a little bit. The amount of work and time and effort that goes in it's not just a case of just grabbing a paintbrush and cracking on because it, well, it's changed the way that you've done it do it now anyway isn't it it's kind of like you're most of the stuff's done digitally whereas mm. before it would have been what um a sketch artist penciler and then yeah. an inker and then somebody potentially colors or maybe keep the kind of black and white to save on that time yeah, I mean, even with black and white, you'd have like a someone who'd do grey wash, like yeah. in Walking Dead, just to give it, some, well, basically like what I'm doing now, yeah, yeah. and to give it some tone. But yeah, like most comics are done by like four or five people. Mm-hmm. I mean, even yeah. in comics, are usually done by two. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's usually a team effort, isn't it? Where you get people doing the outlines and stuff. Because even the late great Stan Lee didn't work by himself. No, exactly. So is that different? Are you using different tones there of grey, or is that just the? This is just highlighting because of the lines that are. Uh, no, so I'm like I'm on a different layer just below the lines. I'm just going up and down the the spectrum, just picking colours, not being particularly fussy yeah. about what I'm doing. Just moving that grey around to get a bit darker. Pretty much, yeah. You don't realise how many levels of grey there is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So I take it um, is that this, this this entire comic book is this going to be uh, black and white or grey? And uh, no, the comic the comic book itself is going to be colour. Right, um, okay. But then these are going to be black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like because it's again because it's digital, you can kind of go over the top and whack color on, um, and it kind of yeah. it takes on the values. So that if I wanted a red skull, I could just do that, and it still takes in the values underneath. Yeah, it's, that's a, it's a cool way of working digital, isn't it? Because you do get that sort of trying to yeah. do that sort of. You'd have to maybe redraw it or. Yeah, exactly. I like print it out and mm-hmm. trace over the top. Yeah, yeah. This guy, when we um, Danny was on last week, he does um, portraits with markers, and he was saying that he does a similar sort of thing with his markers. He puts all the the white and grey in first, and then if he wants to colour something, he just goes over the top of it with a colour pencil. Yeah. But you make a mistake with that, and it's yeah, scary, yeah, high yeah. pressure. <laughs> yeah, oops. <laughs> Start again. Um, guess my joke in the chats, but goes without saying. Funkatron, teen, uh, NMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Nimbles One Hundred One. Can we see a full coloured page? Uh. Or have you not got to that bit yet? <laughs> I haven't got a full colour page for the comic. Um, I've just basically got thumbnails there. Um, so this is still in early, de- early development that you've got the characters down, but you, the pages are quite still yeah. quite loose. So like I've got a. I'm gonna hide all of these. Okay. That's hopefully what I intend to bring this thing to. Um, so that sort of cool. that's amazing um, I really like what you've got going on there with the clothes and stuff that's a really nice effect yeah again like that's that's thanks to Clip Studio like I'm starting to really love the um, the painting side of things on here and it's like if if they got their lasso tool to respond the way that Photoshop does then I might be done with Photoshop yeah um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they will keep developing it further and further because there's updates for this stuff all the time isn't there yeah, exactly. We were talking. Only talk. matter of time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Obviously, there's a lot of money to be made in software and stuff, and keeping it up to date and things like that is just going to bring more and more people to the table, isn't it? So, 
Uh, Nimbles has put amazing. Uh, Funkatron, oof, that beard. Um, and Nimbles 101's put amber hair. <laughs> the. Um, yeah, we were talking today. I mean, like last week we spoke to Dan about Unreal Engine. Well, did you did you manage to, to to spend some time with Unreal Engine when you were doing the game stuff? Uh, no, what we worked that? in Unity. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So we tend to I tend to use Unity a lot more for two D stuff. Mm. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a fantastic engine. Don't get me wrong, but it seems to me that Unreal Engine at the moment is spending an absolute fortune on investing into other other companies as well. A billion dollars into blender i can yeah, see that ridiculous yeah, yeah i can see absolutely i can see that being um implemented straight into the the software and you won't need a 3d modeling package and a game engine anymore you'll just be able to model straight into the game engine yeah that'd be cool uh and they've already sort of done a deal or bought quixel with the mega scans so you can also texture plus they've got plugins for speed tree it's going to literally Unreal Engine is going to be like the one stop shop for a game. Mm-hmm. You're not going to need anything else. They really seem to be sort of cornering, like dominating the market a little bit. Fair play to them. Because mm. Substance Painter and that have just been bought by Adobe. So oh, they're obviously, yeah, they're trying to um, get in, you know, keep the, the sort of digital art world to themselves. Yeah, Adobe tried quite... to do a game engine a few years ago, but it's... Did not work. <laughs> uh, it was alright, it was just clunky. It was very clunky. That doesn't sound like Adobe. Yeah. Clunky software. Yeah. I think what they've done, they sort of realised that and went and went down the route of dimensions a little bit. Which is quite a nice bit of software. It's obviously still in its early stages, but it's a great little sort of product. Product, um, product design product. Um, rendering visualization software. So, like for instance, if you wanted to do some merchandise for your comic book, they you could have they've got t-shirt templates and mug templates and all that sort of stuff. You just literally okay. drag and drop your artwork onto it, um, and then you can render that out and, and show your clients or show your investors or put it on your website and show what your merch would look like, so people That's can start cool. pre-ordering and buying before you have to actually print it out. So that'd be good for stuff like Kickstarters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that's that. You know, let's face it. One thing, you know, you, your comic book's one form of your revenue, but your other form of revenue is going to be your fan base buying your T-shirts, your uh, and everything else that comes with it, isn't it? Yeah, and that's one of the advantages of doing stuff like this as well, because I can sell this as an individual print as well. Yeah, yeah. potentially. Yeah, especially someone who's a fan of the comics. And um, there's a there's a Twitch streamer that I follow. Um, she does comics. She does a web comic series. And I, I've not seen the web comic series, but Rebecca mentioned it in her stream that she she what reads that comic. So what she does is she streams herself making the comics. And so she's got built a massive following from the fan base of the comics that they can then watch her work on some of the panels. That's good idea. Obviously, doesn't show them everything so that they still go off and watch, read the comic. Hmm. But she's managed to build a following on Twitch and merchandise and turn it into a bit of revenue, extra revenue. So that might be some. Is that something that you consider doing? I mean, you mentioned you did quit uh, Twitch before. Yeah. Is it something um, that you'd be. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something I plan to do uh, in the not so distant future. Yeah. So what, what did you use Twitch for last time? Was that for gaming or for? Uh, no, that was for for doing illustrations. I just do, yeah, you know, just illustrations of whatever it was I was working on. I did a little bit of comic work as well, um, but for the most part, I was just feeling it out and figuring out like OBS and mm-hmm. what it actually felt like to stream. It's really awkward. <laughs> yeah, it can be quite difficult, and it, in terms of setting up OBS, it, this. I, there's quite a learning curve as, as most people our regular viewers will note that there's been the odd uh, technical hitch <laughs> <laughs> to doing it so but I think people understand that and, and they, they get it don't they they get the yeah the problems that you're going to face and whatever else uh, and Funkatron's put especially when you trip over your words I'm adamant that I, I said Twitch 
chat. <laughs> and the people are still saying I didn't say Twitch chat on the weekend. <laughs> and that was on Saturday. Uh, I think Funkatron has actually clipped the, that little section, so I'm sure he'll take great pleasure in sharing that with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> where have you put it? He's probably did so in the chat. So where where can people see that clip of me tripping over my words? I'm sure he's posted it on some sort of social media platform, or he's oh. keeping it for some sort of tribunal. Yeah. Um, oh, it's in my clip section, so I'll have to check it out. <laughs> I'm adamant that I didn't say it. Yeah. It's dodgy mic connection. Oh yeah. And it was definitely Twitch chat. Okay, on all time by now. Okay. Oh, it's past twenty-four hours. So, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how long the clips last for. Is it just twenty-four hours? Or? I don't know actually. I don't know that one. I know that these videos only last for like two weeks. So what I do is I, I put them on on YouTube. Hmm. Oh, they're permanent. Oh, brilliant. There we go. Oh, so constant. Con that's it now for me, isn't it? It's going to be a constant reminder. So if anyone is interested in our YouTube channel, there's a little advert there that's popped up on the screen. Because uh, my heart jokes, but not in the clip section, can't find it. Oh no. Hey, hey, found me, you did. I, I really didn't. It, I said Twitch chat. So if anyone is watching that, that sort of. <laughs> you could, who wasn't there on Saturday, you could probably see why. It sounds a little bit dodgy. Shagsy 101s, but where's the clip section? Oh dear. It's all it's all it's all going off now. What you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel instead of looking for clips of me saying things. Yeah. So when you do your traditional stuff, what kind of what kind of um, equipment do you use? Do you have a particular go-to pencil or? Uh, not really. Um, I'm pretty basic, just pencil mm -hmm. um, and pens, and that's pretty much it. Like I don't, I don't paint traditionally at all, because um, that scares me too much. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I just stick to pencil and pen, and sometimes charcoal if I'm feeling fancy. Yeah. So if someone wanted to just get into drawing, get into sketching, doing this kind of thing. What would you recommend they go out and buy right now? Do they need to, or is it just um, a case of... If they're just starting, uh, they don't necessarily need to buy anything. Just a piece of pen, uh, paper and a pencil will do. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to buy fancy stuff at all, really. Um, and then just sketch everything that you see. That's it. And that's, that's pretty much the advice that, that we give people coming in as well. Especially if you they, when they come in just for a chat or in the open days, it's literally just pick up a pencil and draw what you see. Yep. The more observational drawings, like you said about doing life drawing, going to life drawing classes, that's a great opportunity to do that. But not everybody can get to a life drawing class, so go and sit on a park bench, and draw people. Exactly. Yeah. Plenty of stuff out there in the big wide world. I, I, during lockdown, I was getting people to look out of their window and just draw what they see out the window. It's yeah, a good idea, to be fair. Obviously, if, if your window faces a brick wall, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> a sketchbook full of bricks. Um, but I mean, the, do you ever have you ever done anything with the Brooklyn Library? You know, the have you heard of the sketchbook challenge there? Uh, no. Uh, I don't think it's a challenge, but there's a sketchbook project that Brooklyn Library do. Um, I think you, I think it's about twenty or thirty dollars. You pay for you pay pay that. They send you a small little sketchbook. Um, I think it's about A5 possibly. So it's it's not it's not a massive sketchbook, but you fill it with one of their themes or topics, and or you can just do your own thing. You send it back, they scan it, and they put it on the shelf in the library. Oh wow! Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. So certainly check that out. The Brooklyn Library sketchbook. I'll see if I can find the web link and I'll post it in the chat. And then if anyone's interested, so they can certainly get involved because I'm a big fan of promoting sketchbook work. Um, 
So Nimbles One Ones asked, "Do you do Inktober?" Uh, yes, if I remember. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's kind of remembering. Uh, so at the moment, they reckon they've got fifty thousand sketchbooks in the Brooklyn Library. Wow. Uh, and it's this, it's still open for people to participate as well. So add your art to the global library. I'll post that in the chat if anyone's interested, uh, and then I'll pass it on to you later, John. So if you if you do fancy having a go with that and immortalising your artwork in the form of a sketchbook, um, certainly check that out. I'm not sure how much it costs anymore. There is there is a student discount. There used to be a student discount as well. Um, if you order more than five, you get twenty percent off. Free shipping. So the, the deal is order your sketchbook by June the 14th, 2021, return your sketchbook by August 31st, 2021, and then your book enters the library on the 1st of November, 2021. And it's they quite do that impressive. every year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they've got 50,000. If you, I think if you pay a bit extra, you can have it digitized and it'll be on the website. And mm -hmm. it also, they also do a traveling library as well. So they stick it in the back of a van and and they go around different areas so people can see your sketchbook and, and you can just you can actually go to the brooklyn library and find your sketchbook and and view others some of the stuff that people do is, is crazy i think i'm gonna have to try and turn that xbox notification off i've just been invited to a party yeah um so i do apologize to people um who's watching this but i'm yet to figure out how to turn off microsoft notifications So what is your favourite aspect about comics, about drawing comics or working on comics? Uh, it is purely the storytelling thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like for one of the illustrations, I, I like drawing cool stuff, because who doesn't? Mm -hmm. um, but it's really satisfying to, to yeah, just tell a story um, purely few visuals. Obviously, you've got the script as well. Um, but yeah, that's super satisfying. And it's because like you're sort of you're almost thinking like a director of a film. Yeah. Because you're you're in charge of where the camera goes, you're in charge of the pacing. Um, especially if you're working on your own, you're in charge of everything. Um so having that complete control mm -hmm. and freedom is really fun. It's really it's a really interesting. The um so that leads me to my next question. What's your least favourite? Least favourite. Um, flatting can be quite boring, I suppose, because okay. um, it is just like doing a colouring book. Um, so yeah, that, that's the one that's probably the the most boring and least inspiring part. I suppose it's difficult, isn't it, to, you know, when you've got the sort of that area that you're not too sure about or you're you're a little bit uninspired by you know it's it's, it's kind of like the other stuff's got it really got to outweigh that bit hasn't it yeah to keep you motivated and i think like doing something that you don't really necessarily have to think about um doing that like at the end of the day when you're a bit tired and you can just sort of go on autopilot yeah that usually helps Yeah, I'm. Um, Funkatron's just put in the chat. All F4 turns off the no turns them off. I'm assuming that's the notifications. I'm not falling for that. Yeah. I'm not about to press Alt F4. Um, <laughs> so, because it quits the applications. <laughs> so yeah, that that would have been good, wouldn't it? If I'd have just. Uh, to Nimble's put good try. Yeah, that'd have been good, wouldn't it? I've just, I've just shut down uh, OBS. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck John, everyone loves a try. Yeah, thanks for that. I uh, really appreciate you trying to shut down all my applications. But, yeah. So, in terms of your drawing style, what would you, what would you call your drawing style? Um, it's 
probably realistic is yeah. the closest thing. Um, so I find it really difficult to go stylized, um, mm -hmm. which has gone against me quite a lot because it can make some of my drawings a little bit boring mm -hmm. um, and stiff. But my justification is that I want to learn all the rules so then I can break them. That's um, a, that, that is a good good thing way of thinking. That's something that I bang on to game art students about. You know, you've got to learn the rules before you can break them. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good little mantra. I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad you've come up with that. <laughs> Very good. But yeah, it, I, must so, have heard it from someone though, but I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, he bumped into a machine. So, uh, well, I think Funkatron absolutely deserves what's just happened. He's had 33 messages deleted by the moderator, timed out for 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 uh, but Funkatron just cheered 48 bits, so thanks for that. Uh, I think he actually got blocked from spamming the chat with a cheer. Oh. So oh, there you go. So cheered along and then sort of got banned for his trouble. And Nimble's put, yeah, not just me. Amazing. Yeah. So in terms of your, you know, not stylizing work and stuff, is that something that's encouraged to com comic artists? You know, should you stylize your work or is that? Um, I I personally don't think there should be any rules like that because yeah. I think that can stifle creativity. But um. Uh, when I did meet Charlie, I thought I was I was brave and arrogant enough to show him my work and ask him to critique it. Yeah. Um, and he said that yeah, I need to go back and learn the fundamentals. Right. Um, so that sort of helps. That like give me some direction and realize what it is I need to do. To what improve. piece of work did you show him? Uh, I showed him the first version of this comic book, uh, which I printed, which yeah. I don't actually know where it is, um, but. It was hot garbage, to be okay. fair. Um, and was that quite stylized then? Uh, it wasn't meant to be. It was just wrong, um, okay. fortunately. Like, the anatomy was wrong and perspective yeah, was yeah. wrong and just all the fundamentals were just not good enough, unfortunately. But you know what, though? Just having that courage and confidence to go up to someone who, who's quite a celebrity in the comic world and show them your work, that, that takes a lot of courage. Yeah, I, I was uh, <laughs> I was buzzing for a few days afterwards. <laughs> and to get that kind of uh, critique and feedback, I mean, that's probably been absolutely invaluable to you. Yeah, definitely. And where did you? Where was this? Was this in the university? No, this was after one of the life drawing classes because oh, I, okay. I I took my bag with me, which had yeah, yeah. some stuff in it. And I was like, "Can you just look through this for me?" Okay. And he was very kind enough to do it. So I'm, I'm going to assume that Nimbles 101 knows you because it, it, they put it wasn't garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it was a first try. There you go. It was a first try, but it was also garbage. Bunker transport, get real. Get a real job, Twitch bot. I take it that was for banning you for 30 seconds. <laughs> spamming. Brilliant. Um... Yeah, because he, he's been to the university a couple of times doing uh, talks and stuff, hasn't he? Yeah, I haven't actually seen any of his. I, I went to Ellesmere, he did a little talk there, and that was quite interesting, but I haven't seen him at the uni yet. So uh, you mentioned before that uh, some of your influences uh, from the, the Teddy Pratchett novels and stuff. Would you say there's anything else that influences you when it comes to artwork and stories? Um, for contemporary artists, there's a guy on Twitter called Dave Raposa, um, who I think is absolutely killing it. And um, like he's just a magician at the moment with his artwork. He, he's yeah. someone that I yeah, yeah. Really, really look up to. Um, but otherwise, I mean, like uh, in recent months and well, basically since the pandemic, I haven't really looked at that much um, artwork because mm -hmm. uh, just uni work has pretty much dominated everything. Yeah, yeah. It's 
been a tough old year for you for students really you know I'm, I'm quite proud of all our students who, who have come out the other side or coming out the other side and have managed to maintain what they're doing you know, See, I'm, I'm, I think I'm one of the lucky ones really because because I'm older um, and I've so I've had this set up at home even before I came to uni so yeah. the transition from uni to home wasn't that much but I feel really bad for the students who mm -hmm. perhaps don't have like a, a tablet or a decent computer okay. to keep up with the work yeah it's been I think it's been like, digital poverty has been a huge problem I think for yeah. you know kids every child uh, every sort of uh, person who's been told to go home and work from and do, and do education from home it's not been it's probably been a little bit easier for people who are employed because their employers have obviously sorted them out with some equipment yeah but yeah it's, it's, I think if, if they want to continue doing stuff online classes and whatever else then it's got to be something that needs addressing yeah definitely So how long would it take you to complete um, a page, like a full page like this? Um, generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, each uh, part would take about a day. So it will take about a day to do the pencils, a day to do the inks, and a day to do a colour. So about okay. three, pa uh, three days per page. Right. And do you prefer doing um, covers or interior work? Um, I don't really have a preference. I, I, I do. I'm starting to really, really like doing environments um, because that's something that I neglected a lot in the early years. And like, if I had a page to do, um, and in this particular scene there were two characters talking, I'd just do that yeah. and leave the rest of it blank. Um, and yeah, it just looks awful. Whereas now, usually, it's the environment that I tend to start with, right? Okay. And then sort of you can then place the characters in. Yeah. I suppose you're working digitally as well and you put the characters on different layers they can be moved around a bit yeah exactly easier as well so you mentioned you know before that you already had this set up and stuff and that we we talked a little bit before the, the twitch stream about you being a mature student and stuff how have you found that how have you found returning to education after some time away uh i think i i'm really thankful actually that i'm the age that I am because I know I know me at 18 and me at yeah, 18 yeah. wouldn't have taken it seriously um, and I would have basically just fogged off the work and played video games all day um, whereas now as a an oldie I'm <laughs> to sort of like compartmentalise them yeah, yeah. which helps there's a lot there's a lot to be said in about having that life experience before coming to university i think you know having those sort of jobs where you know you're not happy you know you're not happy going in every day and doing it and whatever else but then sort of biting the bullet taking the risk you know of, of income and stuff like that and then coming back and doing something i mean I, I i came back to university at an older age i didn't i didn't go straight from college or school or whatever uh, and I think it's the, probably the best thing I ever did yeah. as a mature student. It's difficult because obviously you know you can be surrounded by eighteen-year-olds who all want to go out to the pub and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Whether you've you've done that, been there, done that, got the t-shirt and thought, no, thank you, I, c I can't. I, I like to have my Sundays uh, free of a headache. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's but you, there's a lot to be learned from the younger people as well, and they've got so much to learn from you mm. in yeah. that group. But yeah, it's something I, I'd recommend to most people. It's just, just take the plunges and then just do it. I mean, I think one of my biggest motivators was I hated my job. Um, and I just, I needed to find a way out. Mm -hmm. And the university was definitely that for me. What, what did you do before you came to the university? Uh, I worked in residential care. Okay. Um, and did that for 10 years. And it's great. It's really, really good. I definitely recommend anyone uh, to get into it because it teaches you a lot. Yeah. Um, but it can also sort of have a stranglehold on you 
and it can keep you there for longer than perhaps you should be. <laughs> I can imagine it's a very rewarding job, but a very yeah. demanding, physically demanding job as well. Yeah, definitely. Like certainly, my first few years there, I, I absolutely loved it. And um, but then after a while, you sort of mm. it it does take its toll on you for sure. Yeah. And like the more responsibility you get within the setup, the more you realize what's wrong with the setup. Yeah. Um, and how powerless in many ways you are to mm -hmm. actually do your job properly. And that, all of those things combined can weigh quite heavily. So it's definitely, I mean, it's always worth just keeping an eye on your mental health anyway. Yeah. Especially when you're looking after others. Yeah, absolutely. And do you, do you find that your mental health's improved by your artwork? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that's literally everybody who's sort of we've talked about mental health with that's come on the Twitch stream has said that, you know, it's it's a real big help doing artwork and relaxing. Yeah. Just putting some music on and creating something, you know. Even if you feel that you're not the best at it, it's kind of just having a go. Yeah, definitely. Because we've mentioned this in previous um, streams where we, we've talked about the amount of celebrities that have popped up that nobody knew they were artists or they'd been to art school. But during lockdown, they've got on board with like Grayson Perry and done some, uh, done his art show. And quite a lot of art programs have popped up during lockdown as well. Yeah. Well, I know, like Darren Brown's is an amazing artist. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. His house is amazing. Yeah. You know, Very strange. Obviously, if you, 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 you're against taxidermy and whatever else, then you probably don't want to go and visit him. But his collections are really sort of something else. Yeah. Interesting stuff, isn't it? It's... So, how do you? I'm going back to your comic book now, your story and everything else. How do you come up with your narrative and your character ideas? So, I like, like I didn't come up with the original concept. Uh, that was someone that I worked with. Um, okay. And so, like, I'm 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 not a steak guy. I'm mm -hmm. more of a steak sauce guy. So, like, okay. I, I find it more challenging to come up with an original idea, but I can take an idea and sort of run with it. Right. Okay. Um, and that's sort of what I did with this. And like, the original concept was like really bloated and quite confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's another thing that for people, because neither of us knew what we were doing. Uh, I mean, arguably, I still don't. But um, so we were just in the dark blindly doing stuff and it yeah it just it didn't make any sense at all so i sort of looked at it again and tried to simplify it and make it a bit more easy to follow um because i think like really complex narratives can put a lot of people off yeah so you, can lose, you can lose people can't you i think this is, is a sort of niche audience that don't yeah. like a real complex story and also like because it's about pirates and pirates aren't necessarily cool at the moment so we're already yeah that's sort of like an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of it kind of peaks and troughs, doesn't it, with different themes. Yeah. For a long time, it was zombies. Yeah. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean sort of boosted the pirates back into the limelight for a bit as well, and probably come back round with somebody else's story soon. Probably soon well, enough. Yeah. So, how does that work then? If this if this was a, a joint idea with somebody else, say for just playing devil's advocate, if this, if your comic book now sort of absolutely skyrocketed and became the next, I don't know, Walking Dead or something, made millions of dollars or whatever, or pounds or whatever, is that something that they would claim royalties for or is it just like a done deal that this is now yours? Um, it's mostly mine, but I mean, I would um, be more than happy for them to definitely take a, a cut because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be doing this without their original idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they 100% should be involved. That's very amicable. That's very good. And there's a lot of people out there that just be like, no, I'm taking my money and I'm off. I'm off to Bora Bora and I'm going to sit in a water hut. Uh, <laughs> you know, so that's very good. And it's good. I think it's good to have that. Um, I don't know what that ethos, that ethics, isn't it, to in art? Yeah. There's and so like, many other people out um, there. Neil Gaiman did a, a commencement speech, I think it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, for uni. And like he said, and I've heard it a lot. I've heard it in video games as well, actually, uh, where like you need two or three things to make it. Like you need mm -hmm. to either be really skilled, be 
on time or be yeah. really nice and good to work with mm -hmm. if you've got two out of those three you should should make it in some capacity yeah because yeah, it's like that thing isn't it? so they always say be careful who you tread on on your way up because you'll, yeah. you'll face them on the way down yeah exactly and it's just good manners in general i suppose yeah absolutely it's always nice to be nice yeah if it costs nothing does it Well, I'm, I'm sort of coming towards the end of my question. So if, and we've got about 13 minutes or so left on mm -hmm. the stream. So if anyone in the chat has got any more questions to ask, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about other stuff. It won't just be, I'll get to the end of your page and like, right, that's it. We're off. Uh, but we've rattled through some quite a, quite a lot of questions this evening. It's been really good. We don't often get to the end. So, in, in outside of sort of comics, what are your main interests and hobbies? Is it like, is there any sort of TV shows, movies, um, games, etc.? Mostly video games, yeah. Like, um, I did stop playing video games for a while because mm -hmm. uh, it was such a time sink. Uh, yeah. I just wasn't getting anything done. Um, but in recent, like recently, I've been going through the Resident Evil uh, series. Yeah, the original uh, series, like. Uh, well. Uh, I, I started actually on four. Okay. Uh, I skipped five and six because. Uh, <laughs> yeah, why, why wouldn't you? <laughs> why wouldn't you? <laughs> went very good. Um, yeah. And uh, recently completed seven and currently going through eight. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. What's the new one? Uh, it's the village, isn't it? Or something? That's the village. Yeah. Is that is that eight? Is it? Yeah. I, I got stuck. I think I got stuck on seven. Um, I ended up in a basement with these sort of black figures coming after me, and all I had was a pen knife. <laughs> so I was like repeatedly stabbing one and then when my finger was tired another one had come out of nowhere and just grabbed me <laughs> I'm like great yep yeah, so <laughs> no thank you <laughs> Resident Evil 2 was always my favourite I'm old school you know I played the original the first came out yeah I got I think Resident Evil and Final Fantasy 7 were the first two games that came with our Playstation yeah. uh, and that was when I was like 7 or 8 and mm -hmm. I started playing Resident Evil the first one and then it got to that cut scene where the zombie turns to the camera, like the first zombie you see, and I turned off. <laughs> I was too scared. So I played Final Fantasy VII instead. See, it's some, not something I've ever sort of got into Final Fantasy, but I suppose being a bit older than you, I, I, Resident Evil 2 was, was kind of like my time when I was, it, it was, it was creepy, but you know, it's kind of, you just played it through. It was a cool game. It is a cool game. But yeah, the, the newer ones are like they they they, they, they don't make they don't have to make you sort of uh, sit up and uh, oh hello that's a bit that's a bit spooky. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I because I really enjoyed the Dead Space stuff and that, yeah, that Space game. Great. Right? <laughs> Kiss my artichokes, but really enjoyed this stream. Thank you, got a dash, but you've given uh, but I've given you a follow on Instagram. And I think that's and she's put skull emo emotes, so I'm assuming that's because he's skulls. <laughs> um, kiss my aunt joke. My auntie used to say that zombie was my uncle. No. Which zombie was that? Is that the Resident Evil Two? Did we mention zombies? I don't know. I can't remember now. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean. We're coming, we're coming up to the end now. We've got about 10 minutes or nine minutes or so left. So if anyone has got any questions in the chat, certainly certainly throw them in. But yeah, in terms of, of, of consoles, um, so was, was PlayStation your go-to thing? Or? Yeah, we were, a, well, I was a Sega kid first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then went to PlayStation, kind of missed Nintendo. I mean, we had Game Boys and stuff. Yeah. But, but I never had a SNES or anything. Very similar to me. I had to go to my friend's house to play the SNES. Yeah. Or a NES. Yeah. But Sega was my thing for a long time. Oh, because uh, my jokes, but yeah, the first one in the first game that turns its head. And <laughs> right, I'm off. Catch you soon. <laughs> 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 okay. See you soon. Very good. Yeah. So, Sonic the Hedgehog, the first Sonic the Hedgehog was what came with my. Sega Master System. Oh, nice. Yeah, we get the uh, Mega Drive 2, mm. and that came with Sonic 2 and Golden Axe. 
Yeah, I had a, I had a Mega Drive um, shortly after. A friend of mine had the first Master System that came with this weird... If you didn't put a cartridge in, you got this weird snail game. Oh, right, okay. Um, that was kind of strange. But yeah, Mega Drive was... Uh, was pretty good. And a friend of mine who lived in Canada had a Sega Genesis, which yeah. is basically the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't know why they decided to change the name from Mega Drive or Genesis or whatever else. So any any TV shows, movies or anything like that that sort of that you um, your go to things? I mean the MCU, I know it's basic but they are good, so mm. um for movies and yeah, yeah. um yeah, T V shows again like I I'm quite boring so I'll watch The Simpsons pretty much forever. Um but like I really liked Invincible, okay, uh, which is on Prime, and that's that's Robert Kirkman's next. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, he actually he wrote it before The Walking Dead. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. But that's just recently been become an animated series, and okay. that was really good. Um, I'll check that one out. I'll check that one out because I've not i not seen that one. But, got um, some lo loads of tips from you this evening on what to <laughs> read and watch. I've got my Keanu Reeves's comic book and uh, Robert Kirkman's. Uh, Animated series. Let me see. It's always worth going on Twitch. Yeah. So it's, you'll have to come on more often. <laughs> uh, Nimbles has put Chameleon Kids. Anyone remember that? Amazing game. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a pretty old game, Chameleon Kid. <laughs> pretty old. But yeah. Right there. Uh, let's see, I had a Spectrum. A friend of mine had a 48k and I had a 128k. <laughs> And I like to point out that mine was the one two eight k, and it was, uh, you know, it was one of them eighties kids things. But you wait half an hour for it to load, scream at you for half an hour, and then it's yeah. crash. <laughs> you could literally go and make yourself a cup of tea, a three course meal, <laughs> walk the dog, come back, and it'd still be screeching, and then it'd go crashed. Please yeah. reinsert ca um, cassette. Oh, the good old days. Simpler times. Simple times, yeah. The the fear that you used to hear that um, dial-up noise as well. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Famies, put Commodore 64. Are hey, you a posh if you had a Commodore 64? She was yeah. obviously one of the rich kids, wasn't she? Hey, Famie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, she's put bar, uh, bar games, haha. -ha. Yeah. Good stuff. So, um, track and field is another one on the Game Boy. You used to have to break your wrist on that. Just trying no, to. I was yeah, on Game Boy. It was it was basically just Mario and uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Like well, Pokemon for a long time, when I had my Game Boy in the eighties, it was kind of like Tetris, and that was it. No, oh, yeah, of course. Tetris, yeah. cracking game. And the guy who made Tetris, do you know how much money he made off Tetris? No. Nothing. Not even oh, really? a penny. Not one penny. Because he was, um, it was, it, he was Russian. Um, all right. And yeah. and pretty much the government took it all. Oh, nice. Or one of the government companies because it's a communist country. Mm. Um, they then they sold the idea to Atari. Oh. Um, yeah, sad times. That's um, tragic. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be devastated. He, I think he, I think he's still not. That's why you've got the Taj. Not Taj Mahal. What's the call? The Kremlin, is it? On the front of, on the front of the case of the. Oh yeah, of course. The Tetris. Thing. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, the, this is this is looking amazing now. This 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 whole scene is looking start, really starting to come together. Yeah, when you when you when you zoom out, it really that skull really looks pretty special. Yeah, it's always a good idea just to zoom out every now and then. What size is this going to be? Is it like an A4 size or is it a cut down size? Uh, it'll probably be A4, yeah. yeah. What? Because what size are floppy comics? I don't think they're quite A4, are they? No, they're not. They're, I can't remember what the thing is. Mm. Um, but like American sizes are different than yeah, British yeah, sizes. Slightly, and... slightly different, aren't they? We've got a couple of minutes left. We've got about three or four minutes. So if anyone in the chat does have a last minute question, what I'll do is uh, we've got about 11 or so people still watching. So we'll look for, um, quickly look while you're 
we'll be finishing off now and giving people a chance just to post any last minute things in the chat for um, someone to read. So I'm just looking um, who is online at the moment and seeing what they're doing. The only thing with Twitch is every time I, I we've because we're so on the Twitch stream for so long, as soon as I click on somebody else, it literally um, is an advert, <laughs> and you have to sit there for thirty seconds <laughs> waiting for this advert to finish. Brilliant. So, how long would you say you've got left now to finish this piece? Uh, probably a couple of hours. Uh, just tying everything together. It's definitely the takes the longest this part. So what we've got? There's a few people that we've raided online today, but we've already done that. So let's have a look if we can find a comic book person who's got hardly any viewers. see who's got low numbers on Twitch. I always like to to give people a, a, a share, a, a raid, and especially if there's not they've not got many viewers, it's a good way to sort of um, just keep sharing it. Really, I suppose keep sharing the stuff that people are doing. Well, I also have to be mindful. Last time I, I did a raid, and it, it, the person was, I think they were speaking um, Spanish or something, and everyone who went to the raid and got a clue what they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always good to watch artwork. There's a couple, quite a few people, quite a few people from different countries that I follow just to watch the, the artwork coming together. Here we go. There's not many people doing uh, comics today. Okay, we've got someone who's doing um, some ink work. Um, quite a large scale as well, actually. So we'll, um, I'm just gonna copy there, I'm just gonna give them a follow. And they should pop up on our raid. So I will throw the, the um, leave screen now. We've got Dark Avenger 381, Rose, from hippie is good she's live right now okay rose from hippie i don't know who that is um okay what i'll do is i'll head over there and i'll give them a follow so next time we're on i will um because we've just spent ages looking for this person <laughs> and we'll 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 raid those next time so in, in in sort of true twitch fashion once you head over to a raid then certainly use our emotes to to spam their chat um and all that's left to say now, John, is thank you very much for an amazing stream. Your artwork is phenomenal. I uh, can't wait to see what this comic book looks like. I'll certainly be pestering you when we're doing Creative Futures uh, to see what, what you've done and how, how you're going to take this forward. It's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you very yeah, much. Um, I, I sort of strongly suggest everyone heads over to the Instagram, into Instagram and, and give John a follow as well. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, and we'll see you next week for another stream. Thanks, guys.